was Prince Harry denied a kiss by his wife Meghan Markle in front of the whole world during a recent Lakers game with their Archwell team? And what might this mean for the state of their business and relationship? Hello everyone, welcome to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany and today we are talking about, yes, Harry and Meghan again. I know it's in the lead up to the coronation, but there was a ton of news about the couple this weekend and a lot of it was super, super bad. So what do they do? Why on Monday, they gather their whole team together and they go out to this Lakers game. And then at one point, Harry and Meghan were featured on the Jumbotron and Harry leaned over as if to get a kiss from his wife, maybe even just on her cheek, and she playfully bats him away. But was it really playful or was it really part of the act and a reflection maybe of the tensions going on behind the scenes? Because things aren't necessarily going particularly well for them. Meghan will not be going to the coronation. I think that really bothers her. Harry is going to have to go without his wife and knows that his wife, to a certain extent, isn't that supportive. And then you also have all their business arrangements, the tensions going on behind there. We have no confirmation of archetype season two. So many things going on behind the scenes for them. And a lot of them not necessarily looking good or looking about as wrinkled as Meghan Markle's linen suit did after she sat down in the game. Yes, it looked pretty bad once she got up. So we are gonna discuss all these things today. And I think really the greater question and something to look at and for all of us to consider is what happens when one half of a partnership gives up their entire life, their friends, their family, their country, everything in order to please their partner? And what happens when that vision that they had of themselves and their relationship and their life begins to fall apart? Because I think that's what's happening with Harry and Meghan. We're getting greater and greater indications that perhaps Harry Harry is starting to resent that he's not in his home country a lot, that his children can't go, that he's missed out on his friendships, his family. So many different things at the behest of Meghan Markle. And most importantly, his place in history, all given up so his wife can clout chase in California. So yes, we will discuss all this today, but if you guys haven't been here to Royal News Network before, like I said, my name is Brittany, and I provide compelling royal commentary on the latest news, and sometimes a little bit of gossip too. In addition, I'll be reviewing television shows and movies and sharing a bit about history. And a week from today, I will be on a plane headed to London for the King's coronation. I cannot wait, guys. I cannot wait. I'm getting prepared. I got all my stuff. I'm so, so excited. And I can't wait to give you guys a lot of great citizen journalism coverage from as close to the front as I can get. So there will be actually massive crowds, but they actually have a queue system. So this is unlike the Jubilee where you could just show up and get anywhere on the mile. They actually have every place fenced off, I guess, and then you have to get in queues to get there inside in order to see the coronation, which I understand you're dealing with a lot of valuable jewelry during this coronation procession, and it's also a security matter. But I'm so excited, guys, and I can't wait to share with you all I get. I plan on being there early, getting as close as I can, and I plan on running down there to try to get that coveted balcony shot. I got one last year, but it wasn't the best, and I'm hoping this year I'm gonna get my little kickstand, I got my big lens, and we're gonna get up and we're gonna get a really good shot, I think. <laughs> or at least I'm gonna try, guys. I'm so excited, though, to bring you guys with me, and just a couple other quick things as well. I have a weekly newsletter, Royal Wire, so if you wanna know the latest Royal news, not only about the Brits, but from Royals around the world, you can check that out. I also have a fashion channel related to royal so if you want to if so if you enjoy royal fashion and royal jewelry there's that option as well and i also have an upcoming trip to austria and germany so you can go to castles with me and see where they filmed the sound of music with me i am so excited for this tour as much as I am with the London one, although maybe a little bit more because there's just so many castles and it's been so long since I've been to Germany and Austria. I just, those are two amazing countries and I've only been to Bavaria one time and I just cannot wait to go back, especially with some of y'all. So check those links out down below. And before we get to Harry and Meghan, of course, we have Catherine, the Princess of Wales. She recently went to the Baby Bank in Windsor and she was able to share with them that she might bring some of her kids' hand-me-downs there. And that she also is very sad because Louis, her youngest, is now five and she can't believe it. I was holding out hope we would get 
Wales is baby number four, but I don't think it'll happen. But I just think it's so sweet. This baby bank provides clothing and items for babies and children and helps mothers and families in need. So I think that's a wonderful program. I'm so excited Catherine was able to go to that place, especially since it's someplace in her own backyard. And then we also have William. He attended the Anzac Dawn service. The remember the Australian and New Zealand troops who have fought in battle. So there is a dawn service and William was there. And there's also a later morning service in Westminster Abbey. That actually Catherine and Harry attended one year. That's really one of the few engagements that Catherine and Harry ever went to by themselves. And I thought Harry looked so engaged with Catherine at that event. She looked stunning. I love the hat. I love the coat. But that was several years ago. And it's also important to bring up William's event because as, at the time that we were getting pictures of that, we were also getting pictures of Harry and Meghan yucking it up at the Lakers game. Oh, yes. And it was not a surprise. When press gets bad for Harry and Meghan, they tried to deflect by doing paparazzi strolls. So make no mistake, the paparazzi were told they were there. They were told to get pictures of the couple there at the game, looking loved up, looking like they were having fun with their team members. So make no mistake, there was a very definite emphasis on getting these shots. And Meghan came there in a suit and was linen and wrinkled horrendously. Linen is one of those things where if you are a celebrity, you should know you can wear linen to an event. You just have to be very careful in the car and you can't be seen after sitting down because once you sit down, ooh, that thing tends to wrinkle and fall apart. And Megan definitely very much looked like that after she got up. And looking at them at that event, I had this idea in mind for a video that we we're gonna talk about the state of their marriage and how it seemed like there were a lot of tensions going on behind the scenes. And then of course, before I can even film that video. We get this event where they're looking very lovey-dovey and they're trying to interact with each other and trying to convince us so hard that yes, this marriage is in a great place. It's so fantastic. It's so great and wonderful. They're so in love. But Meghan Markle, a source, already told us that her support only extends so far. And I wonder if Harry is beginning to notice this because when he went in for a kiss, they were on the jumbotron, Megan looked pleased as punch because there's a camera on her and she's never happier than when a camera is on her. And Harry tried to, he was laughing too, and he at some point looked and was about to lean in for a kiss and she playfully batted him away. And here's what one commentator said in the sun, which I think is, very key because it's very wrong in a lot of ways. So here's what they said. Harry seems to use two head bobs to suggest he's moving in for a kiss, but then he leans away with a comedy grimace to suggest he's tried but failed. It's all flirty fun, but does look as though Megan prefers some elegant discretion than her husband here. Elegant discretion? Really? Have you ever seen Harry and Meghan? They were anything but discreet their entire royal careers and since then. And Meghan actually does rather bat Harry away and leans away from him. So I looked because I was like, let's remind ourselves how many public kisses we have from Harry and Meghan. And I really can't think of anything except for the balcony from Catherine and William in terms of a kiss on the lips. So we have Harry and Meghan leaving the church after their wedding in the carriage after their wedding, at a polo game after their wedding. And then we also have Harry and Meghan on tour in South Africa. We have them at the recent Invictus Games. And we also have Harry and Meghan. He had to come up after she introduced him at the latest event in The Hague and she had to give him a full on kiss on the lips. Meghan is anything but discreet when it comes to her affections. She always has this two-handed death grip on Harry at all times. They're always holding hands, even when it's not appropriate. If you've been following royals for a while, you'll notice pretty much in all families, they just don't hold hands that much. And that's because it's a professional thing. If you're working with your partner, are you gonna walk around the office all the time holding hands? Probably not. It would make people sometimes a little bit uncomfortable because it's like, well, we need to be professional here in this situation. And Harry and Meghan were very much 
not representing themselves. They were representing the United Kingdom and their tactile displays. I even interviewed Valentine Lowe about this and he was like, yeah, I can't remember exactly what he said off the top of my head, but it was, everybody was just kind of confused by it when they first started seeing it. And I think all of them were like, are they really doing that? Because that's not that appropriate given their roles as royals. Now, obviously you can say they are not royals, but the key thing there is that Meghan has never shied away from planting one on her husband and letting the whole world know that yes, Harry is mine. But that moment, she doesn't. And she's very giggly and very over the top in her motions as she is every time she's on camera. So it's part of, it feels like part of the act. But the problem is, is that if you are a very tactile couple, if you kiss all the time, if you are constantly holding hands and touching each other, once you don't do that, people really do begin to wonder. And while there were moments where they were close at the event, I just didn't feel like the displays of hand-holding and everything were as over the top as they've been before. And you gotta wonder, is that a reflection of something going on behind the scenes? And I feel like that is. So here's what happened this weekend if you haven't caught up. After the Oprah Winfrey interview, King Charles sent a letter to Meghan Markle just expressing the sadness that he felt over their interview and what happened. She apparently wrote him back and named the royal racist. And also the article talked a lot about how she still thought the, the comment was racist and how she didn't really wanna go because the palace's response to her myriad of complaints hasn't been to her satisfaction. Well, then there was a lot of back and forth. The Telegraph article was amended several times. There were legal letters sent from Buckingham Palace. And then most people believe after Buckingham Palace sent a letter, well, Harry and Meghan had to send a letter, otherwise they look complicit in the article. And the article was amended to tell us how much Meghan was not going just because of Archie and his birthday. They also amended a comment as well because although they mentioned that Meghan no longer holds a grudge and she doesn't think the comment was racist it w and it wasn't made with malicious intention, she still considers the comment racist. They removed that little bit. And so you have this thing where there's just a lot of negative press because people saw through Meghan's attempt to deflect that this article and story was from her. And then we also had a couple articles come out talking about how Harry's starting to miss his life in the UK. Even Megan's crying makeup artist also mentioned that Harry apparently is starting to miss his life. I mean, he's found his groove in California, but he is missing Britain. He's missing his family, his friends, his old life. And who can blame the guy? Everything in his life right now was designed by Meghan Markle. Everything they're doing is at the behest and guidance of Meghan Markle and her legal and business team, which were there at the Lakers game with them. This is Meghan's world and Harry's just living in it. And you gotta wonder if that's not totally working for Harry anymore, especially given the coronation. This is a huge moment. I'm sure Harry in his mind had a much different vision of the coronation in the years before he married Meghan Markle. He was gonna stand there with his father, the king, on Buckingham Palace's balcony. We know this was probably going to be a possibility because Harry was there with Catherine and William, the queen, and King Charles and Queen Camilla at the queen's Diamond Jubilee, they were the only royals on the balcony, only the five of them. And then by the Queen's Platinum Jubilee just 10 years later, he didn't even merit a mention. He wasn't even on the balcony. He didn't even get a place of honor next to his family at St. Paul's Cathedral when they came for the service of Thanksgiving. Everything in his life, everything he expected out of his life has changed drastically. And his life is nothing like what he wanted to, in a lot of respects. I think he did want a more private life, but I think the life he would have preferred to leave is one that's reflected in Chelsea Davies' life. She owns a travel company, a boutique travel company, a jewelry line, and I think she very much has a life where she gets to travel what she wants, do what she wants. She gets to go to Africa all the time, which is where she's from. And Harry, he's stuck in California, and although it's nice, not saying California isn't nice, but there's a lot of traffic, a lot of smog, there's a lot of politics, a lot of competition between couples, who has the biggest car, the biggest mansion, so many different things. A lot more stressful life than I think what Harry probably initially expected. But 
this is what Megan's wants and this is Megan's world. And Harry's bought into that. But again, I wonder if he's starting to wake up a bit. So here's a couple of the comments I found rather enlightening. This is from the sun, but the new king has been so busy he had time for only one conversation. Harry's understood to miss aspects of British life and may start spending more time here despite losing Frogmore Cottage. A source told the sun, Harry was desperate to come back for the coronation and spend quality time with his family. Another says, and this is from Megan's makeup artist friend, Daniel Martin, he said Harry has definitely found his vibe and is very settled in California, but he does miss home. And saying that he misses home is rather key here because Harry told us in a recent interview that he considers California home. So which is it? Is it California or is it the United Kingdom? Or is it that as time goes on and he feels more unsettled in California, given the demands on his life, the constant hustling that they have to do, promoting themselves, taking attention away from his family, which some of the things I think he does perhaps enjoy or at least approve of, but he does actually miss his life because you can't take somebody entirely out of their life and expect them to just move on to something else, especially when they had such a large network of people. Megan is very much a mirror, you could say. She mirrors what she thinks you want from her, so it's just hard to get to know her. And she's willing to dismiss people out of her life at the drop of the hat. We have this with her father, her siblings, her best friend Jessica Maroney. She's just willing to drop kick them out of her life once it becomes inconvenient for her. So Megan very much has this cultivated series of friendships of people that she communicates with. Whereas Harry's life was very different. He had a large extended family that he was very close to. He had a lot of cousins his days. He has a nephews and a niece. He had a lot of second cousins. He very much had this massive family unit. In addition to all of his friends. Now you gotta understand, in aristocratic circles, it's very different than the United States where you can have a certain amount of money and you can enter into most of high society. That's not necessarily the same in the UK. Whereas things are breaking down, a lot of people talk about how the Beckhams really want to break into that upper echelon of society, but they're just not really able to because they don't have those coveted aristocratic ties and connections. Those are key, those are huge, and that's a very insular world. And these people are friends and they don't generally rat on each other. And if you are within that circle, they protect you, they protect each other, they protect their children. That's why the Tyndalls hang out with the Waleses and the Phillips and so many other of these royal sets. We also have recently the announcement that the Duke of Westminster, who if Meghan Markle was smart, she would have gone after him because he has a heck of a lot more money than Prince Harry. He recently got engaged and nobody really knew who he was dating for a really long time. I'm sure that woman has actually spent a lot of time with Catherine and William because Hugh, who is the Duke of Westminster, is friends with them. He's Prince George's godfather. So I'm sure she's had a very close connection with the royals, but do you know it? No. Does he really flaunt his connections? Not really, no. He shows up at very big events, but it's a very different, different world. And I wonder if Harry's missing that community that was so supportive of each other. And now he has to deal with Megan's friends, all these staff members, and people who are not really there for him, but there to service Megan's agenda. And he's just the putz that's going along for the ride. And he is the reason they are able to try to make all of these deals. And I think one other thing I find very interesting is that Megan, apparently her support is finite. It only extends so far. So let me read you this quote about King Charles's coronation and why Meghan was like, you know what? I just really can't go. And this was a article in People Magazine, which has close ties to Harry and Meghan. It says, Meghan wants to be there to support her father-in-law, but at the same time, the scrutiny she receives outweighs the support. So what does this tell you? Well, Meghan only supports people so far. This includes her father-in-law, her own father. And who probably feels this the most? It's probably Harry himself. There's another article talking about how Harry really needs Meghan. He really, she's just the rock that he rests on. 
but she won't go to support him during the coronation because it might make her look bad. She might be the focus of the scrutiny from the crowd and, and that's just too much for her. And so as time goes on and as Harry is in this relationship, I'm sure he's finding out that Meghan, she supports him but only so much. When it's inconvenient for her, if it doesn't work with her agenda or narrative, and if it's uncomfortable, she won't do it. And Harry, who has given up everything in his life for her, is finding out that, hey, if her support isn't always there, what does this mean for me and our relationships? And I don't wish divorce on anyone, I don't wish it on their children, on them, because that is a very challenging thing. Thing. But when you have such a power imbalance in a relationship, that is inevitably going to lead to conflict at some point. I only ever gave them five years in their marriage. The reason was I didn't think they had anything in common except for Harry's obsession with Megan and Megan's obsession with herself. That's what they have in common. They talk about being philanthropists, yet they don't really work on any of that philanthropy. Harry was very dedicated to the soldiers in the UK and everything, but although he still has the Invictus Games, I'm I'm sure he's not really working on that very much and he's pretty much given up a lot of his passions to please Megan. He doesn't hunt anymore. He doesn't get to spend a lot of time with his family. And we've also seen them not interacting much together except for very scheduled and coordinated paparazzi appearances. So we have Harry's book tour. He did everything himself. Meghan Markle never showed up for that book tour. And while sources close to Meghan claimed that she wanted to do that so that he could have the limelight all to himself, you also can't miss out on the fact that it didn't necessarily go super well for him. A lot of people made fun of his penis a lot and they were mercilessly lambasted by South Park. So it maybe is not more that she wanted him to have all the attention, more that she couldn't stand to support him knowing that it might bring more scrutiny on him and therefore by extension, her. And then you look at her podcast archetypes. When they initially did their first appearance on Spotify, they were together. Their trailer was together. Their first episode of their holiday special thing was together. They've never done a project together again. It's Megan with archetypes. And while that generated a lot of noise, did it generate a lot of revenue? Is it going to be renewed? We're not sure yet. And so what about Harry in that relationship? I'm sure Spotify some, wants something from him. Is he gonna do anything for Spotify? Does he have any podcast ideas? Because Megan's wasn't even that innovative and I think that's why it failed so miserably in a lot of ways is because it wasn't really that interesting and it was so overproduced that it was hard to get into it and listening to her was just like nails on chalkboard. It's really hard. And so poor Harry has really been cut out of the Spotify relationship because we also, don't forget, had that promo they did for Spotify where they were together on a couch as if they were going to do something together. Now they were together for the Netflix documentary, but that was filmed over a couple of years and we really haven't seen them very much since. And it appears like Megan wants to distance herself from Harry because she sees Harry as an anchor to her own image. And Meghan Markle very much dearly wants to protect her image. So when they go to this Lakers game, they have to look very much in love because although Meghan isn't as attached to their relationship anymore because it's causing her public image harm, she knows that he remains still a little bit more popular than she does. So she acts very loved up and pushes their relationship together to give the public this idea that yes, they are still very, very close. But I just don't buy it. I think their relationship is fraying behind the scenes. How can it not? How can the stresses of their life, especially Harry missing out on everything related to his family for the last four or five years, how can that not be damaging to that person in that dynamic? And so it could be at this point that Harry is starting to wake up a bit because I think that was always inevitably going to happen. But unfortunately, He's stuck. He's stuck with Meghan Markle because now they have children together. So even if he wants to divorce, even if he wants to leave, he's burned bridges so badly with his own family and his own friendships. He is very isolated in a lot of ways. And I can't help feeling sorry for the guy to a certain extent. I know, I know people are so mad and angry at Harry, but you gotta think too, this man lived 
under an umbrella of delusion and paranoia for the last four or five years. He doesn't totally know what's truth anymore. And so even when truth comes up and hits him in the face, he's not so sure if that's right. And the only person who can give him guidance anymore, because that's how he's managed and created his life, is Meghan Markle. And he wants him to stay in that state. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to work forever because at some point the stresses may break through the delusions. It's hard not to see that happening. So I really do hope though that Harry is waking up. I do have a soft spot for Harry. I know he's terrible, but I do think the guy has been exceedingly manipulated and I don't think he truly knows what's going on in some instances. So guys, let me know what you think. Do you think Harry and Meghan's marriage is going from strength to strength or just starting to fray behind the scenes as Harry's realizing that his wife really doesn't support him in their relationship and that she's willing to feed him to the wolves in order to save her own hide. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.